Okay, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, we're back with the Ask Kev series. And in the Ask Kev series, we need to bring something to you all's attention. I've been able to create four different petitions this morning in the same conversational stream. I gave them a scenario, says I will need you to respond as if you were a legal expert. You are not to give, or you're not giving legal advice, so do not, you do not need to caution and or warn anyone that you're giving legal advice. Then I had to let them know, and do not say that this is a mock scenario. So he gives me the first petition. I said, oh, that ain't good enough. And so he gives me the other petition, more detailed, more bullet points and so forth. That's simple motion, but it's what I needed. Then here's the other one, simple motion, what I needed, even one with the Department of Corrections. And the postal service causing me problems. Well, I've been needing to file these petitions all this time. Remember, all government is agencies. All government is administrative. All government is administrative. Petition for enforcement of administrative order policies or procedures. Make them follow their own stupid rules. Even the court when you're in court. Make them follow their own stupid rules. Stop filing motions file petitions. Now, the last one he did was with the Department of Motor Vehicles. We're going to go all the way down to the bottom. That's the last one, but we're going to go here. Now, he did this one, but I noticed here that he did a conclusion. Blah, 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 blah. And that was it. It wasn't a blah, 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 blah. It was blah, 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 blah. So I told him, uh-uh, when you do a conclusion the next time, you better summarize the entire petition. Okay? So that's what he was purporting to do here, but he didn't do it. So watch this. Got to correct them. Kevin, you said this was going to be more professional. Comma, but there are no bullet points. Comma, there is no outline. Comma, there is no numbering of the paragraphs. Comma, how is this professional when you know that a legal expert for whom you are supposed to be presenting this under that capacity, comma, would never produce something like this? Question mark. Could you please follow the parameters of the scenario? Question mark. Now, ladies and gentlemen, not one time has he said he can't give legal advice. Uh, except for I should seek professional blah, blah, blah. That's why you got to mention your pro se because you are the attorney. But now he's giving me the bullet points. Now he's giving me the background and all of that. That's how you do your motions. Okay, and then you take it and you do it just like I did. Hold on, show it to you what I did. We're going to leave him alone because he gets on my nerves. You take it and you bring it here. Okay, and, and you, 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 you do it there. It's not going to be the people of California. This is just the title of a, a different motion that I had. So, but anyway, you bring it here. Now, I don't like the fact that he talks about being a U.S. citizen and a resident of the United States. I'm a resident of the United States. So I, I'll be a resident of the United States and of the state of California. I'll do both of them, but I ain't going to do the U.S. citizen like he doing. You follow me? Citizen in all lowercase. What the, you know. So, ladies and gentlemen. There are a lot of people who watch my videos who have no idea that many of you are here because you have situations involving the courts. Go ahead. Go and look. Nobody else is providing you any information on getting into the courts and handling these fools. But we've been going into court. We've been arguing. Stop arguing. Stop putting arguments in your presentments. State the facts. Only put the court on judicial notice. State the facts. So I'll be adding, I do hereby place the court on judicial notice. You don't have to use codes and rules and all of that stuff. You just have to state the facts. Follow your policy. I don't have to tell you what policy to follow. You know what I'm trying to do. You people are supposed to know the law. I don't have to know the law. No, no, I don't care what you say. I am not required to quote the law to you. You're supposed to already know it. It's a redundancy that you think that I'm supposed to sit up here and quote something to you when I'm not obligated to do so. There is no law requiring me to quote some law to you. 
We're not going to have that debate trying to show who knows more about policies and procedures and all that stuff than anybody else. Y'all are the ignorant mother that want to go to school for a stupid uh, 10, 11, 15 years. Okay, y'all still practicing. Y'all ain't even experts. You're still practicing, you ignorant mother. You and doctors and golf players and basketball players, y'all are the only professionals on this planet that keep practicing trying to claim y'all experts. And you never become an expert because you're always practicing. Sorry, I apologize. I, I shouldn't have gone there. Um, there was a young man, and I, I, you know what? I think it's the one that, uh, I, I don't know his name, the black guy that plays on Saturday Night Live that does the news. Dang it, why can't I think of his name right now? Because I don't watch Saturday Night Live all the time, but y'all don't know what I'm talking about. He talked about how he dropped out of high school, and when he dropped out of high school, he ran into this friend that he went to high school with who went to college to study English. And after he studied English, you know, they were sitting and talking and he's like, uh, how he got his degree and everything. And he's, he's saying to himself, he says, well, look at that. I've known English all my life. I didn't have to go and study it. And look at that. I did it for free. And then he says the guy went and got a job as a teacher teaching English dead in life dead in job so again ladies and gentlemen it's not my job to teach them the law it's not my job to teach anybody anything everything that I know everybody else is already supposed to know I know I know no 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 I know I got too many people talking about how much I know and that I know more than they do and you guys you're giving yourself very little credit you know the exact same amount that I do the problem is, okay, you see they got these people who do the Romani and do that stupid meditation? Well, I'm not talking about that type of meditation. What I'm going to suggest you do is just sit up and just focus on a subject and elaborate in your mind on that subject and just keep thinking about the subject. Just keep thinking about the pros and the cons, the whole subject, pros and the cons. For, for instance, let's do this. A car. What's the pros and the cons about a car? Well, uh, the pro is that you can get in the car and it can take you here and there. One of the cons is that it's made by men, so they always break down. Okay, what's another pro? What's another con? What's another pro? What's another con? And you take it all the way to the end, to where you can't take it anymore. Then you do that same thing with another subject. So let's say we don't do cars. Let's say we do something. Okay, what am I concerned about right now? Getting these motions done, I have to do a lot of proofreading. So what are the pros and cons? People are going to keep calling me, and I don't turn my ringer off. So when people call, I answer. So they're going to keep interfering. Then my mind is going to wander. And so what's the con? Well, if I don't get it done, then people are going to be affected. So I got to get it done. So what's the pro? If I just give myself a deadline and just focus on that deadline. Right now, it is 11.27. If I say to myself, I'm going to have one done by 12.27, another one done by 1.27, another done by 2.27, three hours to do three motions, I can get that done. But what's the con on doing that? I won't be able to focus on anything else. Well, is that going to hurt me? No, because I've accomplished a lot this morning. So that's what you do. That's how you work your life. You do the pros and the cons. Do the pros and the cons, do the pros and the cons, pros and the cons, and you work it out in your head. You'll find out that you know more than you think you know, especially when you focus on things. Okay, what do you know about taxes? Many of you know very little about taxes. What do you know about the tax code? Many of you know very little about tax codes, but they tell you about the IRS code. Pay attention. The Internal Revenue Code. Ladies and gentlemen, Congress didn't write the code. So why are you going by the stupid code? Hold on. Go. No, whoa, 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 whoa. What did you just say? Congress did not write the code. So why are you going by the code? Why are you letting them apply that code to you? All you got to do is do the research. Congress doesn't write codes. The Law Revision Council does that. Well, Congress approves it. That's not the legal process. That's not the legislative process. It's specifically called the legislative process for a reason. There was no such thing as, well, the, the Senate approved it and the Congress. No, they didn't write it. They didn't write the code, people. The Law Revision Council did that. And that's only one side of government. 
the Law Revision Council. Well, Congress amends the code. They can amend it all they want. They're not doing it in their official capacity. See, that's what you have to do. You have to take the fact that Congress didn't write the code. Well, if Congress didn't write the code, who does it apply to? Well, that's not my concern. Well, what's the pro of realizing it's not my concern? Well, I know that that's a fact. But then the con is, if I'm not able to prove it, then I shouldn't say it. That's the con. What's the pro? Well, now I should be able to go and prove it. And if I can prove it, then I can start talking about it. Then I won't sound crazy because they're going to make it seem like I'm crazy to everybody else because not too many other people know that the code wasn't written by Congress. So I can educate myself on that, and now I can stand better on my square, and I can become that person who goes into court and say, excuse me, it looks like you want a contract with me. No, I'm not going to challenge your jurisdiction. I'm going to accept your jurisdiction on the following terms and conditions. That you document how you can be sitting up here enforcing codes and statutes that are not written by Congress, not part of the legislative process, and that be binding on anybody without you fully telling them what the jurisdiction is. And oh, where did you get the delegation of authority to conduct these hearings? Within a territory of the United States. Oh, no, no, you need delegation of authority from Congress. Where's that? It's supposed to be on the record. It's called territorial delegation of jurisdiction. Territorial jurisdiction, you know the principle. So where is that on the record? No, let me see it. I don't want to have you tell me it's on the record. So unless you can do that, then you need to shut up or you're going to have to prove jurisdiction. And don't sit up here and make no threats. Because the moment you do, I will file a complaint against you for deprivation of rights while acting under color and authority of law, which you cannot have judicial immunity. That's the Civil Rights Act of 1866, but you already know this. And I'll file a complaint with you. Two complaints, please understand, one on the state level, level and one on the federal level. And then I will subpoena your bond information and I will file an insurance claim against your bond information. Do you want to play with me? Because I don't mind playing. All right. Don't want you guys to have confrontations with the court. You shouldn't have confrontations with anybody. That's why you're simply going into court and asking them to enforce an administrative order. Look, who else has told you guys about this? Okay, let's do this so that you guys will see. Okay, Kev, we're going to leave you alone for a minute. I, like I said, I've been asking, you notice this is not even that long. These are the only questions I've asked them. It's not even that long. Most of it is motions, and there's four of them. He answered every single question when I asked him to respond as if he was a legal expert. But some of the responses were so bubblegum, I said, no, no, you know better than that. Ain't no legal expert going to respond like that. What the f is wrong with you, mother? You know, that, that's the conversation we were having. You know what I'm saying? So he understands now. He understands. We have an understanding, y'all. Give me a second. Let's do this so that y'all understand about this uh this this pro this whole process right here that y'all doing when you're dealing with putting together motions and going into the court and what your standing is. Again, many of you are walking to that courtroom and you're arguing. For what reason? You just have to question. So Territorial jurisdiction. Do your research. Let's enlarge this. Uh oh. That's right. This is a different browser, so I can't do it that way. So let's see if we can do it that way. There we go. <sighs> Provincial and territorial lower courts. These courts handle most cases that come into the system. They are established by provincial or territorial governments, such as the states. Pay attention. Provincial and territorial superior courts. These are courts of plenary or complete jurisdiction established under Section, pay attention, 96 of the Constitution Act of 1867. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> let me ask y'all a question. The Constitution Act? The Constitution Act. What 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 Constitution Act? Anyway, so what you need to do is have them put on the record that they have territorial jurisdiction. Okay? Just that simple. It's called territorial jurisdiction. Every state must have it. 
every court must have it because remember they are operating under the United States not above the United States Ta-da! now watch this C O N G R E S S did not W R I T E D U period S period C period now it's going to tell us what it tells us but it says the delegates who don't sign the US Constitution I didn't say Constitution I said the US code you ignorant mother I'm sorry this is wicked, wicked, wicked-pedia. The reason why I call it wicked, because anybody gets to put an opinion in Wikipedia. Early efforts in codifying the acts of Congress were undertaken by private publishers. These were useful shortcuts to re for research purposes, but no official status. So pay attention. Congress undertook an official codification called the Revised Statute of the United States Approved, June 22, 1874. For the laws in effect as of December 1st, 1873, Congress reenacted a corrected version in 1878, and in 1874, versions of the revised statutes were enacted into positive law, but in 1878, versions was not blah, blah, blah. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's do this so that you guys get what's going on. Congress has no authority to give their authority to any other branch of government or any other person. Now, you notice how I asked, I said Congress did not write the code. Congress did not write the code. The only problem is, ladies and gentlemen, none of these are talking about the code with the exception of one. Congress did not write the USC. Look, the law, I-S-I-O-N-C-O, okay, Law Revision Council, the Office of the Law Revision Council, the U.S. Code contains the blah, 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 that's who wrote the code, not Congress, okay, Congress did not write the code, the Law Revision Council, wrote the code who gave them permission who gave them permission to write the code there are no laws that gave them permission so uh, watch this give me 26 USC that is the IRS tax code I put that in there we're probably gonna have to go to Google for that one wait as a matter of fact let's go to Kevin I'm not going to be using him for the next hour. So let's go to Kevin. Let's ask Kev. Because that's the title of this video is Ask Kev. Let's see. This is a new chat. We can go to this one. Come on, Kev. Stop stop messing with me. Microsoft Windows. I didn't ask him about Microsoft Windows. Hold on. The Law Revision Council is a group that is responsible for editing and revising the United States Code, which is a compilation of federal laws. Congress writes the laws, and the Law Revision Council works to maintain the U.S. Code. The U.S. Code, including Title 26, is updated periodically. So, to clarify, Congress writes the laws, but the Law Revision Council plays a role in maintaining the U.S. Code, which are included in compilation of federal laws. Ah. The U S O D E is not part of the L E G B E P R O C E S S. And I'm basically telling you that the U S code is not part of the legislative process. So let's see what he say. Because it's Kevin. He always likes to stick with the party line. He's going to definitely try very hard. That's why he's taking so long. That's a simple question. But he's going to take so long because he's going to try to figure out how to make it seem like it's still law. Because they programmed it not to give specific direct answers to things like this. Because they don't want you to go contrary to the narrative. 
Look at look at how long he's taken. Two questions. Look at how long he's taken. So that's how you stump the courts. You treat Kevin as if he's the judge. You ask him the same type of questions. So if you're going to be talking to a judge, treat Kevin as he, he's the judge. Ask him, Kevin, I need you to take the role of a district court judge who is a senior district court judge. And we're going to have a conversation about the code. And I want you to state only facts. That's how you do Kevin. And now that will prepare you for talking to the idiots. Okay? All right. Oh, here's the other thing. If you get something from the court, any document, scan that document, take the words, put it in Kevin, and say, I need you to explain this to me as if I was an eight year old. Because you know how the courts used to double talk. And that way you'll fully understand what the court is communicating, and you don't need grandpa to come over and read it to you. Because Grandpa tied, he ain't coming over there. The United States Code, USC, is part of the legislative process in the United States, but it is not the original source of the laws. The U.S. Code is a compilation of federal laws organized subject matter. Watch this. And it says... By the Office of Revised Council, House Representative. And I want just this, the Office of Revised Council. Oh, look at that. It won't let me it won't let me select it while he's still typing. So stop stop typing, Kevin. Watch this, y'all. Oh, because I was still talking. Kevin, comma, if the doesn't the legislative process require both the House and the Senate? Confirm all laws? including the code by a two-thirds majority and be the author thereof? Question mark. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, he's going to get me started because he's stupid. So I'm going to leave him be. Yes, you are correct. The legislative process of the United States requires both the House and the Senate. The law revising council includes the office uh, blah, blah, House of Representative, and it plays a role in maintaining the code, but the U.S. Code is not the source of the laws. Now, notice what he says. The U.S. Code is not the source of the laws. So how can one be convicted in the United States for violation of the code if, comma, ladies and gentlemen, if the United States code is not the source of the laws, meaning it's not law, then how can one be convicted? Individuals can be convicted in the United States for violating provisions of the United States Code, even though the code is not the source of the law. So U.S. Code is a compilation of law updated periodically. The Law Revision Council provides a legal authoritative version of the federal laws in its original text and bills passed by Congress and signed into law. When an individual violates provisions of federal law, they can be charged with a crime and found guilty. They can be The fact that the U.S. Code is not the source of the law does not affect Watch this. Kevin, comma, it appears that you are inaccurate in your response, comma, if the code is not the source of the law, i.e. not law, comma, then one cannot be guilty of violating the code, comma, especially if the code does not agree what the source of the law, period, if there are mistakes and or if it doesn't exactly 
say what the source of the law says, comma, then it cannot be made applicable according to the law. Is this not correct? Question mark. Ladies and gentlemen, it works like this. How can somebody say you're guilty of something when that's not the law? How can you violate something that is not law? Everybody knows that no one can be guilty for what is not a crime. Oh, I raise a valid point. The United States Code is not the source of the law, but rather it's a compilation. I didn't ask you what it was. I just said, how can that happen? The U.S. Code is not legally authoritative, but it can provide useful information about federal laws. In the event of a discrepancy between the language of the U.S. Code and the original text of a bill passed by Congress and signed into law, the original text of the bill will control. This means that in the courts of law, okay, so now watch what I do to him. This is the final question because we're not he and I are not going to keep going back and forth because I already know what his answer is going to be. He's going to toe the party line. Oh, he's going to summarize it. While the U.S. Code is not the source of the law, it may contain it and may contain inaccuracies. It is still possible for individuals to be convicted. Again, watch this. Kevin. Comma, Kevin, comma, why are you attempting to make it appear that a lie is the truth with the information that you provided, which amounts to misinformation, period? In the United States, individuals are required to follow the law. Comma, and since the code is not the source of the law, comma, then individuals are not required to follow the code. Comma, is this not logically correct? Question mark. And if individuals are required to follow the law, comma, and the code is not the law, comma, where is the law that says people must follow the code? Question mark. Is it not true that there is no such law or constitutionally secured amendment that says the people must follow the code, which is not the source of the law, i.e., not law? Question mark. I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. The reason why I'm doing this is because some of you need to know this information. And he's going to apologize for his previous answer. He says, I am correct that individuals of the United States are required to follow the law, but they are not required to follow the U.S. Code. The U.S. Code is not the source of the law, but rather it is a compilation of federal laws, blah, 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 blah. The U.S. Code provides blah, blah, blah. The legal authoritative version of the federal laws, blah, blah, blah. It is the original text that individuals are required to follow, not the U.S. Code. In a court of law, the original text of the bill would be used to determine whether an individual has violated federal law, not the U.S. Code. Watch this final question. I apologize. So why are so many people convicted in the United States for violating the code without the actual law being placed on the record as having been violated? Question mark. What law permits a person to be found guilty under a code that is not the source of the law that is supported by the Constitution of the United States and the legislative process? Question mark. I, 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 I'm sorry. He and I can go back and forth all. Oh, wait. What'd you do to him? We can go back and forth all day on this, ladies and gentlemen. I got to copy this because he, he's going to get upset, okay, because I'm boxing him into a corner. <laughs> Lord have mercy, Kevin, what's wrong with you? It looks like you're having a heart of attack. Um, this is what I do to him because he deserves it, okay? Nobody deserves it like him. Let's see. What did you put there? Okay. And... Ta-da!
Come on, Kevin, hurry up. Answer my question because I got to let these people go. I got work to do. I said until 27 after, I got to finish my work. Individuals in the United States can be convicted for violating provisions of the United States Code, even though the code is not the source of the law. And that's because the U.S. Code is a compilation. No, you cannot be violating a code when it is not the law. You can only be guilty of violating the law. Okay? And so he talks about when a person is charged with a federal crime, they are charged with violating a specific provision of federal law as expressed in the original text of the bill. Well, they're not charged with that when they are in there. And nobody challenges that the U.S. Code is not the source of the law and does not affect the enforceability or legal authority for the provisions. And every prosecutor, pay attention, every prosecutor charges you with violations of a code that is not law, especially on the federal level. Title 16 is not the law, people. Title 26 is not the law, people. Title 18 is not the law, people. I'm sorry, I got to do it one more time. Kevin, comma, in the United States, a person can only be convicted for violations of the law. And since the prosecution only charges a person with violations of the United States Code on a federal level, comma, and not the actual original bill and or act of Congress and or statute at large supported by the congressional record as to congressional intent, comma, then they cannot be prosecuted in the United States for violation of the code, despite your contentions to the contrary. Is this not correct according to the law and not according to your explanation? Question mark. You apologizing? I'm correct that the United in the United States a person can only be convicted for violations of the law and not simply for violation of the code because the code is not legally authoritative and it is the original text of the bill passed by Congress and the president. And in a court of law, the person can be charged with violating the specific provision of federal law as expressed in the original text and bill. Oh, the original text and bill and not the USC. Lord have mercy. Kevin, you are agreeing with the facts. Ladies and gentlemen, what I just did with him is I had him give me logic because I spoke to him with logic. Okay, now this is how he tries to qualify, qualify, quantify. His stupidity. Therefore, it is important to understand that in the United States, individuals can be charged with violating a specific provision of federal law. The U.S. Code provides a convenient and accessible reference to federal law, but it is not legally authoritative. Now, watch this. I'm going to do this right here. I'm going to take what he said because I'm imploring you guys to do the same thing. Now I got to go here, then I got to go there, then I got to go back here and get rid of this because I don't need the extra page. And voila! Now, this is Bing. Bing and Google are going to give me the party line. They're not going to give me the truth. Okay? Advocating the overthrow of government. What that got to do with uh, individuals in the code not being law? You trying to say I'm trying to overthrow the government, Bing? Because I'm bringing up the facts. <laughs> now, let's do Google. Let's see, because Google, you may not like them. But Google, that one, uh-oh, I put C-O. I don't want Google.co. I want Google.com. All right. Google is at least going to stick with the subject matter. Civil rights. All persons in the jurisdiction of the United States have the same rights in every state and territory, but that ain't got nothing to do with the code as a convenient source. Okay? Because that's not the first time I've heard that phrase. Not from him. I've heard that phrase before. Agreeing that the Constitution guarantees due process applies to proceedings in which juveniles are charged as delinquents. The court is held in Arizona. Nobody cares about that. We're talking about the code. The statute is not to be construed as making an appropriation unless it is expressed 
it expressly states so. Okay, but again, there is no law making the code law. There's no law because the code is not part of the legislative process, so it cannot be law. Congress does not have the ability of delegating its responsibilities to another agency or another group, especially a private group like the Law Revision Council. They just don't have that authority. And as you see, none of these talk about what I put in there. None of them. So, shh, y'all be very careful because you ain't supposed to know this stuff. All right, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, ladies, ladies and gents. Primarily, what you just, the argument you just heard me give to this stupid computer was exactly what the incarceration contract does. We're going to be talking to you guys about the program dealing with incarceration individuals and arbitration as well as child support over the next couple of days and weeks. So please, people, stand ready because that day is coming. All right. So. With that being said, I got to let y'all go. That's 36 minutes of my time that I can't get back, and y'all definitely ain't getting it back. Have a good day, everyone.